Hey, 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 everybody. Today for you, podcast number 99. Today's podcast is titled, Do You Remember What You Are Good At? Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of your weekly Limitless Life Network podcast. We are Drs. Pete and Sandy Lombardi, and this is the Limitless Life Network, where we flesh out the limitations that are preventing you from reaching your goals and living the life that you are called to lead. And we always want to start off with... Gratitude. So thank you for your listening and feedback and encouraging us. It's been great. Yes, absolutely. And I know I got some really positive feedback from Dr. Chris Brown. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, hopefully today's podcast uh, exceeds your expectations uh, based on last week. So I know he said that it really meant a lot to him and spoke a lot to him about what we talked about last week. So Um, That's great. And uh, if you also are getting something from the podcast, uh, part of uh, our ask is to share it, Um, share it with other people. And um, we just like to spread this good news throughout the world. So uh, that's the beauty of the internet. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Easily. (laughs) If a message is worth sharing, it is done. Um, Sometimes when it's not worth sharing, that's also... (laughs) goes viral. So (laughs) anyway, uh, we're not going to say things that are off color to go viral because that's not important to us. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, so today's today's title, Do You Remember What You're Good At? I think this is a great one. And um, we don't really have a backstory about it, do we? Well, a little bit. I was at a women's um, study group on Tuesday nights. It happens on Tuesday nights in the summer and um, leading a, a small group. And Um, we were talking about, um, I guess like, are we prepared to do things for the Lord? Like, are you prepared now? And, and, but what came out of that was going around the circle and, and I was just hearing all these reasons why women thought they weren't ready. They weren't capable. They weren't Mm. enough. And it just broke my heart. And, And, and I do the same thing. And I just thought, oh, how that hurts the Lord, too, when we do that all the time. And so it's kind of a little bit where this uh, this is spurting from is like it, it, we kind of went around the room and asked people, what are you good at? And um, it was great to hear them vocalize things that they did see, that the positive things in their life. So that's a little bit of the backstory, I guess. Yeah, it's good. So uh, our, our first point is, are you, you already have the ingredients. Mm-hmm. That's our first point. You already have the ingredients. How would you describe that? Again, it was um, from the study that we were doing, and the and, um, teacher brought us to um, a portion of First Kings, and it was Elijah went to the, well, he was told to go to the city gate and find a widow and ask her to make him bread, basically. And so he gets to the gate, and he finds this woman, and um, she he asks her to make him bread. First he says, go to the uh, well and, and bring me water. She does that, and then he asks her to make bread, and she said, I, you know, I only have this little jar of flour and a little bit of oil, and I'm going to make my son and my last meal. That was the plan, because they were starving to death. And he said, well, please, you know, make me the bread and then make enough for yourself. And basically, and that you you won't run out. And so the point of this lesson was that she had the ingredients to make the bread, but she didn't think it was enough. And like without Elijah and God's touch on it, it wasn't enough. Like it wouldn't have lasted, right? But she had the ingredients. And so often we have the ingredients. Mm -hmm. We may not acknowledge them. We might not even be aware we have them. Like that's where we have talents that we don't acknowledge. That's one example. Yeah. I think that's, that's uh, super powerful because it takes faith to step out and say, and, and that's, that's supernatural, right? Like the, what happened there was a supernatural experience, mm-hmm. but we just don't today, we just don't seem to have any faith in the supernatural, almost like it doesn't exist, but yet the word exists. Mm-hmm. And it's not just a theory because 
I mean, I've seen it in my own life, the things that I wasn't capable of on my own, and I was able to accomplish with God, not on my own. Like, right. And that's an example. It happens in everybody's life if you tune in, if you if you tune into that tuner and, and allow that to happen in your life. But you have to have the faith to step out and and do the work, which she had to make the bread. Like she was unwilling to make the bread because she had some doubts and apprehensions. And that's where we have to, we have to put those doubts aside. Like we're not good enough or, or not smart enough, whatever it is. And, and, and you have the ingredients, you were not made inferiorly, Mm -hmm. right? Like you have, there's, there's no difference between one woman and another woman in regard to their physiology, right? And one man to another man. Our physiology is the same. It's just, you know, you have to have more confidence in what your body is capable of. Mm-hmm. I see that in, in healing, too. I see that in, in, the, in the realm of trying to help people understand that their body has all the ingredients. We just have to remove the interference and we have to give the body and support the body with what it needs. And it will, it will respond much like a plant does. Mm -hmm. When you give a plant what it needs, it will respond and you have the ingredients. Yeah. You just have to put them together. And I think too, like what you're, we have, what we have is enough. Like it, it will be enough and it will be multiplied. So like I, you know, the other, other night I heard, I'm not educated enough. I'm not old enough yet. Like, well, when do we ever reach enough, right? So mm-hmm. it is enough for the first step. And yeah, then the next, right. you'll be prepared for the next. And I also like that the message of the woman concerned that she would be giving her last flower, right? This is all I have left to to say, well, not even to say one last meal for my son and I. But I think like I can often do that. Maybe you guys can do that where... I don't have enough time to give towards this. I don't have enough finances. I don't have enough resources. And we're almost holding on to the little bit that we think we have, where if we can let it go mm. and it can be multiplied, if, if we're willing to let it out of our grip. Yeah, because we just, we don't see further down the road. We just see the present of like, oh, I don't have enough right now. Mm-hmm. But what about later? Like, how did this ever, this, this little bit that you have now, where did it ever come from? Couldn't, it, couldn't there be more later? Right. Yeah, there could be, but we forget about that. And there will be, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that's, the, that's what we have to realize is down the road, there will be more. There will be more, yeah. right? There's so much more, more than you can imagine sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. That's point one. <laughs> yeah. Um, point number two. We all need reminding, and this was kind of from you. And yeah, well, this was a, a podcast I listened to early this morning uh, from uh, Sean Dill, and he was talking about, you know, oftentimes we don't really value our own services or our own abilities or whatever, and it's a really good exercise to be reminded of what you are good at. Um, and, and if you were to ask, you know, people that are close to you, colleagues, coworkers, family members, friends, what do you see are my strengths? What do you, what am I good at? What do you see that I'm really good at? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you just don't see what you're good at. Right. And sometimes you don't really value how good you are at something because you haven't heard enough of your own success stories, you know? And, and I, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily like the word accolades, but sometimes we need to have somebody remind us of our past accolades, mm-hmm. like where you've done something well. It doesn't mean that you live in the past, but it's, it's, it is a confidence booster. And sometimes people just need a bit more confidence of the great things that you have done. Not necessarily that you got an award for it or something like that, because that's meaningless to me. It's more of like, you know what? Do you remember the time when... You made dinner for that family that had just lost a loved one. Do you remember that? Like, do you remember the time that, you know, so-and-so, their mother passed away and you drove down to their house and sat with them? Do you remember the time that you went and visited the woman with cancer who was dying and was scared to leave her kids behind? You know, like that's, that is, that is a, a bolstering that we forget about, that, That's something that we did that was wonderful and beneficial to mankind and humankind. And we just, we just, ah, it's no big deal. It was nothing. 
right? Mm -hmm. But that's the greatness that you're capable of. Yeah. And and we forget about that. Yeah. We kind of got into that a little bit with our study last week, like devaluing mm -hmm. ourselves and our attributes and our, our talents. And um, there was a scripture we were looking at too, like don't despise the small beginnings. Like we might discredit something that we've done because it, it seems small and insignificant and not worthy of an accolade. But that's where the Lord starts and uses us. Like, and it's almost like that can be a bit like prideful, like, well, it wasn't anything really great. So I'm waiting until I can do something really great. Mm -hmm. You know, like use those small things, which aren't small at all. Right. Yeah. There really is no small thing versus a big thing, mm -hmm. especially because the, the world looks at it through a different lens anyway. Right. And we're not called to be like the world. We're called to be different. Mm -hmm. Right. We're called to be salt and light in this world, which is different. And, you know, salt adds flavor. Light penetrates the darkness. And there's a lot of darkness. Mm -hmm. And we have to be that. Right. But it's done through sometimes what seems like. They're not big things, but they are big things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And um, you just need to be reminded that you've done it in the past mm -hmm. and you'll do it in the future, but the world wants to keep you down and it wants to tell you, that it, it wants to remind you and, you, and I bet you don't forget this, you don't forget your negative press, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody says one bad thing and you don't forget that. You remember the words, you remember the tone, boy, you don't forget the haters. Yeah. We remember the haters. Right, the people yeah. that that you know were yelled at us or screamed at us or were indignant to us, yeah, we remember that. Like you're gonna, we're gonna ruminate in that. No, don't mm -hmm. stop, stop. You know who you are. You know, I mean, even if something was taken out taken out of context, you know, and that happens all the time. People are so afraid to put something out there because they're afraid to be ridiculed. And, and criticized and judged. So they put out nothing, they say nothing, and nothing happens except for the bad perpetuates, yeah. right? Because that doesn't stop. You know, it's not like, you know, they're going to stop putting out pornography because it's bad. It's going to, it's making so much money. They're going to keep putting it out there. But gosh forbid anybody puts out something good that somebody criticizes. And, and now all of a sudden, well, I'm not going to put any more good out there. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you need reminding. You're better than that. <laughs> so point number three is what? What's the cost? Yeah, the cost. What is the cost? Well, this is a, um, there's a price for just about everything, isn't there? Mm -hmm. There's a price for um, taking action now or, or there's a price later for not taking any type of action. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, it depends on what kind of tuition you want to pay. What kind of price do you want to pay? Um, I, I say that I say tuition a lot because I feel like there are no mistakes, but there is tuition. I've made a lot of errors uh, or bad choices at times, and it's cost me in a lot of different ways. Um, but it was worth the lesson. You know, whatever the cost was monetarily, it was worth the lesson. So I've probably mm -hmm. paid way more money intuition to the lessons of life that I ever did to any type of uh, educational institution. <laughs> I and, love that. It's good. Yeah. Well, and it might not even be money, right? Your tuition is... No. Uh, right. No, yeah. it's not always money, but like there's a cost. Time is a cost, right? right? Like it's an mm -hmm. invest... There's an investment of time. And, uh, and the, you know, it's like do you can... You, we really should be always trying to aim up, right? We should always be trying to aim up. And if you're truly trying to aim up, there is a level of something that you have to pay to do that. And it's a matter of de dedicating time to doing that, right? To, yeah. to whether it's studying, learning, you know, like investing in something, mm -hmm. you know, but there's a cost of inaction too. And it, like, say, for instance, your health, you, you know, you can pay now or you can pay later. And the pay now is, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, paying with time and money into my exercise, whether it's buying a, a bike, like my you know, Dr. G just bought a new road bike, mm. spent a lot of money on a nice carbon fiber bike with a carbon fiber frame because he's just riding it so much more. He wants a better ride. And uh, he's investing in his health because he knows he loves it and he knows he'll do it, mm -hmm. right? 
That's an investment of time. It's an investment of money to go and do it. Okay, great. Well, what if he doesn't spend the money? What if he doesn't spend the time? And then down the road, now he's got to pay with what? With his loss health, of health, right? right? Health Which costs. could mean a cost of lots of doctor visits, mm -hmm. a loss of the ability to do things with his family. Um, maybe now it's a cost of his family having to take time out of their day to visit him in the hospital or to go see him after his surgery for his heart disease. You know, whatever it might be right. that you start to acquire, now it's costing not just you, but it's costing your loved ones too. Mm, and that's true. a big point to remember is that sometimes our actions we think are only hurting ourselves or our inactions are hurting ourselves. But down the road, it starts to influence and impact the people that are around us and that care about us. Yeah. When you think, well, gee, I don't have anybody around me or that cares about me. And I can think of some people like that that don't have a lot of close relationships, but it still ends up impacting other people, whether it's the people that are having to care for you when you can't care for yourself or say if you're an alcoholic and you continue to drink, right? There's a cost of not stopping that bad action. And maybe someday you get into an accident and hurt other people right. because you're, you're constantly, you know, living off of alcohol. You know, so there's a, always a price to be paid, and it's whether you want to pay for the good stuff or you want to pay for the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. right? Cost of action versus inaction. Yep, right? exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And inaction, there's a price for inaction. Mm -hmm. You know, don't ever forget that 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 staying, you know, in the middle and playing Switzerland. There's a cost for that. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, complacency. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and that's point number four. Which brings us to four, which really <laughs> ties well with that. Um, some things are irreplaceable. Like we talked about health. Like we can get to a point where some portion of your health may not be able to be recovered. Relationships that comes to mind. Like there can be decisions that we make, actions we take that can damage relationships and they will never be able to fully view what they were before. And I don't, you know, I do believe the Lord can restore anything and everything. So that's possible. Um, but our actions have consequences. And um, there are things that just can be shattered. Yeah. Relationships get damaged. But the other thing I think of that's irreplaceable is time. Yeah. You know, as time, as we, as we let things go, as we just kind of, ah, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. And when later finally comes and then it's like, wow, I wish I started earlier because I needed more time to do this. Mm. And now I'm out of time. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, you can't go back now. You can't reverse what you, your choice of inaction. I wish I had gone back, you know, like I don't want anybody to end their life with regrets. Mm. You know, I want you to, to live full out and take every advantage of every moment on this planet to do good, right? Yeah. To do good for you to aim up and to go on an adventure in life, an adventure that you're called to lead. Yeah. All right. And then that brings us to the last point, which is... The sacrifice. Yeah, the sacrifice. So I was just listening to um, a Joe Rogan podcast, <laughs> and he's interviewing Jordan Peterson. And on this podcast... Um, Jordan Peterson was detailing out, uh, the life of the, the story of Abraham. And he was also, uh, talking about the story of Jesus Christ and, and, and the greatest sacrifice of all time. Mm -hmm. And Joe Rogan had said, he said to him, he goes, I've never heard the crucifixion explained that way before. He, Joe said that I've always heard it as like, Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins, and if we believe in him, then, you know, he did this for all of us to, to save us from our sins. He, he took upon the cross, he took upon all our sins, which is very true. Mm -hmm. And what Jordan talked about was Abraham, and every time that he, he was, would go out and, and, and he was following God, he would come to a place where he would build an altar and he would, he would sacrifice to God, and it was his time for reflection. He would stop and he would reflect, and he would think about his purpose of like, what's my chief aim? What's my goal here? I'm following God's will. That's what I'm doing, and I'm offering up a sacrifice. I'm, I'm actually giving up of something mm -hmm. that I'm leaving behind. 
And that's a sacrifice. Like he's leaving behind something that is no longer a part of him anymore as he's growing. And that's the only way that we truly grow is when something is left behind. And he asked Joe Rogan, he goes, Joe, you know, you got into martial arts at a young age. What did you sacrifice? And Joe's answer was my social life. He's like, well, what else? And he's like, well, that's pretty much it. I didn't have any responsibilities and I would just get done with school. I would go, I would not hang out with my friends anymore. And I would just go and work out and practice martial arts. I just poured myself into it. And he's like, that's an example of you grew and you had to give something up. And when we want to grow, you've got to look at what you're cutting out of your life because that's what God is trying to do. He's, he's trying to draw you closer to get you out of things that are not of God so that you can grow and follow him. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he did with Abraham because he he asked him to sacrifice his son, which is which is like, you know, Jesus, you know, God right. sacrificing his son. Mm -hmm. And and even though he didn't, you know, he didn't actually kill Isaac at that time, it was the willingness to give up his son and being obedient mm -hmm. in in the face of something that is just awful. But he was that willing to follow God to grow, to give up what he loved the most. And that's what God did for us. And so when we look at that and that crucifixion is in the center of our our communities, it's not just seeing what Jesus did, but it's like asking of yourself, now what can what do I need to give up so that I can be closer to God, so that mm -hmm. I can do more for the communities? You know, how can I sacrifice a part of me that is not bearing fruit? How do I cut that off so that I can grow to be of greater service to humanity mm -hmm. to in whatever way God is calling you? And if you can do that, like that's what he says, like if you buy into the adventure of following God, he goes, you and you, you will come to places where you leave things behind of your old self. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's meant by that. Yeah. It's interesting. Sometimes we have it, um, times where we revisit uh, old things in our life, right? We might visit mm. uh, families or friends and different parts of our lives that, uh, you know, was part of our lives before and not super involved now. And it's, uh, it's always shocking to me, I guess, um, mm. just how shallow that looks and feels now. Mm. And um, I guess to not have a greater purpose in life other than living for the moment and, and happy, you know, it's like this, uh, short term meeting my gratification kind of thing. And I'm being vague, I guess, but you know, we can all think of times when you, you visit past, right. And it, it should look shallow and different to you than it did then. And, um, I just think like love, grow and serve, like we've got to grow, we've got to learn to love others and, and serve. Like we're here for something other than us, you know? And so that's a sacrifice. Like It is. And and I'll tell you, it seems like, oh, I don't want to give that up. But it's so, it's, it is such a shallow existence. Your, if your purpose in life is to just have a good time, I mean, if that's what you're living for is to just have, have fun, to go have drinks with everybody and, and laugh and tell jokes. And I mean, what is that? That's not, that's not meaningful. That's just, then what happens when the drinks and the jokes are over? Like, then what do you do? Yeah. Well, there's an end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's there's not, a finality to it. And, and, and it's not, it's some, not something that lasts forever, mm -hmm. right? And that's where you got to look at what, what lasts forever. And that, that is an eternity, you know, what is going to do that? So yeah. it's, those are those are some great questions. Uh, you got some resources you can look up there. I know we got some scripture that Sandy mentioned, and uh, there's a podcast you can check out too. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for listening. This is uh, this edition number ninety nine yeah, of your next week. Yeah, if we make it. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> we will make it. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah. Thank you for for tuning in to ninety nine episodes of the Limitless Life Network podcast. Be sure to tune in each and every week so you can stay connected, be inspired, and keep to moving toward your best life by stripping away your limitations. And we will see you back next week. Have a great one. Have a great week. Bye.